Well, welcome to the latest edition of TV and the Net. I'm your host, Tom Vartanian. Today's show brought to you by AmeriQ Credit Union for every day for everything. Located next to Little Caesars at 3944 Route 281 in Cortland. By Right Angle Creek Farm and Marathon, all natural pasture raised Angus beef from our farm to your table. By the Cortland Voice, the exclusive media partner of TV on the Net. For all your local news and sports in Cortland County at no cost to you, check out CortlandVoice.com. By the Royal Auto Group on Route 281 in Cortland, the home of no hassle, no razzle dazzle. Check them out at royalautogroup.com. By Yemen Real Estate at the entrance of Yemen Park off I-81, exit 11 in Cortland. By DJ Philly C, make your wedding, party, or event extra special with the best DJ in the area. Contact DJ Philly C at 607-745-4346. By Nikki C's Hometown Pizzeria and Meatball Shop on Route 281 next to Hobo's in Homer. Find them online for fast, secure ordering or call 607-749-5300. They have a unique menu with dietary specific options. Nikki C's, your grab-and-go specialists. By Graftex, located on Elm Street in Cortland. Founded in 1984, they provide custom screen printing and embroidery for teams and local businesses. Graftex continues its dedication to servicing customer needs for innovative graphic designs, custom and printed apparel, and quality service. They are easy to contact at 1 800 417 7791. By Seven Valley Agency at 18 Tompkins Street in Cortland for all your personalized insurance services. Give them a call at 607 753 1821 or check them out online at sevenvalleyagency.com. Seven Valley Agency, where your money matters, our advice counts. By Riley's Cafe and Marathon, open seven days a week for sit in dining in a friendly family atmosphere. Riley's also offers carry out and catering for some events. Check them out online at Riley'sCafe.com or call 607 849 6434. By Isaac Merker Studio, handling all your photographic needs in central New York since 1982 at 74 Hamlin Street in Cortland. Give them a call at 607 756 0849 or check them out online at IsaacMerker.com or on their Facebook page. By Arnold's Flower Shop, your premier wedding florist at 19 West Main Street in Dryden for flowers for your wedding. Or also, they now have holiday arrangements, centerpieces, and evergreen items are all available. So give them a call at 607-844-8601 or order online at arnoldsflowershop.com. By M&D Deli, located on Central Avenue in Cortland, open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. M&D has breakfast sandwiches, bakery items, and daily lunch specials. They are also available for catering. Check out their Facebook page for more information. Stop by or call 607-753-TO-GO, that's 753-8646, and look for their new food truck in the spring of 2022. And by Crop Growers, LLP, the first choice in crop insurance, located in Homer. Contact KC Slade at 607 607- Five nine one two four six zero for more information. Well, we are st- now kicking off December, so it means it's the start of the winter basketball season and all the sports. Basically, this is the uh, this is the uh, lead weekend for everybody's going to be in action between Homer and Cortland and the IEC schools, the CCL schools. It's just it's it's time to transition. We're moving indoors where it's warmer than these last chilly weekends we spent with the football team. It's uh. And one of those guys would have enjoyed uh, his first run as they uh, hang out on the sidelines all season. Uh, he got to work for Dusty Stillman and became the new uh, play, uh, play charter, I guess is the best word to describe him, uh, for the varsity football team this year. We're falling back on his expertise there from his dad being a football coach. But, of course, he's also the girls' basketball coach, and they open up uh, this weekend. And it's going to be nice. It's a Friday-Saturday tournament. They're going to have uh, Lafayette, Moravia are going to be involved, along with uh, Skinny Atlas. And it's the, uh, from what I read elsewhere, it's the first annual Jessica Beal Memorial Tournament as well, honoring a former uh, Homer athlete that I remember covering back in my early days of uh, my years with Homer. So it's kind of nice that they're going to be involved in that as well. And a nice way to honor Jessica as well, because her dad has for many years has been an assistant coach with the uh, girls' teams Uh I don't know how long he's been doing it, but he's done it for a, a long time. But uh, the guy we're talking to today is the head coach for the uh, the Lady Trojans. It's uh, C.J. Kudla. Welcome, C.J. 
Thank you very much for having me again, Tom. I'm really excited. Uh, we open up with our 49th season here at uh, Homer for girls basketball. Um, and like you said, it's pretty exciting. We have the uh, Jessica M. Beal tournament, um, the memorial for Jeff's daughter, Jessica, who uh, you know lost her life in 2004. Uh, Jeff has been an assistant here for over 20 years. He told me the other night when I talked to him on the phone. And I just thought it would be a great way you know, to kick off the season and also you know um, have a memorial for you know uh, Jeff's daughter. And also you know show to, sort of uh, show our respects and you know um uh you know take care of Jeff because Jeff Jeff's taken care of so many kids here at Homer over the years and he's just such a great human being and a great guy and um so it it was just a great idea that myself and a couple other people came up with um Roger Sager one of my assistants helped me out with it a lot coming up with the idea so yeah we're excited we got uh Skinny Atlas on Friday at 6 30 Moravia and Lafayette the other semifinal at five o'clock right before us and then we'll have the consolation at five o'clock Saturday and the championship at 6 30 on um Saturday as well right after that it, it is. It's uh, it's kind of funny because you know Homer hasn't well didn't host a lot of tournaments. Once in a great while you'd see something, but with the small gym it was harder. But with well, I still call it the new gym because it's really not that that old. And uh, it was right before COVID kind of hit. They actually the wrestlers they had a fine. They helped, they hosted a tournament. and They've hosted a league tournament now too, I believe. Uh, before COVID really uh, shut everything down, you know, for the past year, you know, kind of everything. And now to see you know a basketball tournament, you know, like we said, it's nice enough. The girls are going to be the first one to do that with the uh, the, the Jessica Beal uh, tournament, and uh, so it's it's nice, you know, with the new gym, it's opened up a lot of opportunities, and uh, it's just nice that you know it's got to feel nice, you know. You always the home where always used to go into tournaments, but now you get to you know you get to host one, and then you're playing in another one. It's a pretty heavyweight tournament. I remember back in the uh, my early early days before i came to the Cortland area when i covered a lot of the IZ stuff in 85 and then in the early times like that Watkins glen you're gonna be down there for a holiday tournament and that's always a huge tournament down there Watkins glen they've had some great teams over the years and uh you throw in the likes down there we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit more later newfield of course a power late in the past few years and uh dundee has also been a good team out of section five so i mean two really two quality tournaments on the schedule this year yeah, you know, when Todd Lisi uh, first took over last, uh, two years ago now, I think, um, him and I were just talking about how, you know, we have such a beautiful gym. We have one of the night, and I, I, you know, I am so blessed to be able to coach in it, and the girls are so blessed to be able to play in it. Uh, the, we need to do things like tournaments and things like that. And I think Jason Reynolds, our wrestling coach, has done a tremendous job with the wrestling stuff that he's done, you know, getting all the schools that come to him for the wrestling things that we do. And we should be hosting tournaments in a gym like that. When you've got, the, you know, a, a brand new, I think it's what, what going on four years, is our fifth yes. year, fourth or fifth year yeah. now with the gym, because I think it came in the year before I got here as the head coach. Uh, you, you need to do things like that. Get people here to experience the gym that we have and see, you know, we have one of the more beautiful facilities along with our football stadium and our locker rooms downstairs and, and you know, sort of, you know, show it off a little bit. And, uh, and so that was another big reason we wanted the tournament. And, uh, yeah, like you said, um, Skinny Atlas is going to be very good. They, they bring back their junior point guard, uh, Maddie Ramsgard, who's, um, I believe, a, a third or fourth year player on their varsity team. She's a big-time AAU player. We're going to have a, a heck of a job shutting her down. Um, they have a couple other go good girls um, that like to shoot from the outside and a big center. So we're going to have a tough go at it the first, the first game um, against them, and then whoever we match up with in the second round, whether it be Skinny Atlas or, or I'm sorry, Moravia or Lafayette. Lafayette's got a really good point guard um, as well, uh, the pa the Papano girl, uh, who's another third or fourth year girl on varsity, um, another all league player from last year down in the uh, the OHSL Patriot. And then Moravia, you know, where I come from, I know all those, uh, where I came from before uh, I got to Homer, you know, I know all those girls, and um, I know that they're a very big, they're a very tough, they're a very solid team, they're very coachable, and uh, John Crossgrove does a phenomenal job with them over there, so I know they'll be ready to go. So John's still there. I remember John, I covered John when he played at Trumansburg, so I've known John for a long time, yeah. and uh, and actually, you say Moravia's got a, another good team coming back, and they've got two of their recent grads are both now playing at the TC3 this year. So, yep. I mean, uh, kind of funny. He's got two girls from Moravia there along with uh, uh, Carissa Wilbur from uh, McGraw. Yep. And then they've got a girl from Ithaca High School on it. She's the shortest one on the team, all about yep. five foot two. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, it's, they've got a very local feel there except for like one player or so. So, I mean, it's a lot of girls basketball in this area. People sometimes maybe forget about how good some of the, bas you know, the basketball has been in this area forever. 
Yeah, you know, just coming from coming from Moravia uh, really taught me a lot about how to build up the youth program and how if you're going to be successful, your youth program has to be good. I think Moravia has a youth program, boys and girls basketball, in, in multiple sports that I think a lot of schools can try to emulate, and that's sort of what we try, have tried to emulate, and I think we've, we're doing a phenomenal job of it here at Homer now is building up our youth basketball program. Um, and John Crossgrove and Todd Mulvaney both do. You know, I think I said on your first podcast, there's no two coaches that have had a bigger impact on me as a basketball coach than those two guys. Uh, uh, and you know, our just to build off of that, our Homer Basketball Club is now in year two. And in our summer camp over uh, this past July, we had 94 kids at it, and uh, that was K through six, just Homer kids. Um, I'm sorry, K through 12, all Homer kids. 94 kids. Um, at this point, now that we look at it, Zach Pollock, our uh, Homer Rec Director, and I have sat down um, multiple times. We have a team per grade level in girls basketball here at Homer, um, and it's, it's been a great start to building the youth program. I know it's it's taken a couple years. I'm going into year four now. I can't believe it um, as the head varsity girls coach, and now that we're, we've sort of tapped into the youth program, and, and we're doing a lot of good things, um, and I'm excited for the future, but you know, going back, you know, that's what I learned at um, Moravia, and like you said, there's a lot. There's so many good programs around here. You got you know, Moravia, who runs a great youth program, you know, we're starting to build up on it. Um, there's, uh, there's, um, you know, Marathon. A- Andy Pierce does a great job down there with building his program. Uh, Ithaca, a- another big school that's doing a good job. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're excited there. I-, I think people do lose sight of, you know, the good athletes, not just basketball players, the good athletes that can come out of small schools like this. And uh, it's been great to see, you know, sort of the build just in Homer. And we'll just kind of we'll talk like a little bit more about the, the schedule. Like you say, you get the tournament. Yep. Then it's another week for you get you know for you really get into the league season. I mean, there's a scrimmage in the, in the middle, but uh, not like opening up the uh, OHSL season uh, on December 16th. It'll be a road game, and sure, why not go up and take on West Hill of all people yep. on that first game? And then you're on the road the uh, the following Thursday, it's a week later, just before Christmas, you uh, go up to Bishop Ludden place. So, I mean, it's. The league said you're right out of the gates with two tough ones. Definitely. So they actually rearranged our uh, divisions this year. There's four divisions in the OHSL. There's um, Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three, Division Four. The first division is all the private schools. So you got Bishop Blood and Bishop Grimes, SAS and uh, CBA. Um, all four are going to be studs this year. They're all going to be very good. West, um, I'm sorry, Bishop Blood and um, should be a very big contender up in Class A. I'm very excited that we're getting to play them twice to you know get us ready for um, sectional play. And then you've got Division One, which is uh, Marcellus, West Hill, um, Chittenango, and Skinny Atlas. Then Division Three would be Homer, Kaz, Hannibal, and Phoenix. So that's the division we're in. Um, so we actually the only league games we're all in the OHSL, but the only league games that really count towards our league schedule this year are the home and away of the two games against Hannibal Phoenix and uh and uh Casanova so but I'm, I'm very excited to get um uh West Hill to open up you know the actual like you said OHSL league play um I know West Hill is going to be very good. They've got Catherine Dady back, who's one of the best guards in the league. They have a very good center. Uh, they're very well coached, as you know, by Sue Ludwig, who was a st- stud player at Syracuse, um, has become a very big mentor of mine. Um, and then, yeah, we go to Bishop Ludden, who I just spoke about. Uh, then, you know, we sort of have, um, you know, we get a Christmas break, and then we're right back down in that tournament, like you said, with we open up with Dundee, a team out of Section 5 who's been, you know, in the past, not not too bad. Um, and then, you know, Watkins Glen and Newfield, who are two big rivals out in Section 4, playing on the other side in the first round. And, um, you know, we'll have, we'll have a very good um, test, you know, before we get into our real league play when we match up with Hannibal uh, for our first actual division game. And then, you know, once we get you know the first part of the six, the first six games are sort of spread out here in the first month but when we get into january you know we average a game i think uh you know just about every three days you know the majority of our schedule is really packed into that um, month and a half that we have in between the beginning of january and then when sectionals start that second week so you know we're hoping we get some really good tests here to start off and then we can get into our uh you know our league schedule with mostly hopefully all the kinks worked out and <laughs> where you can only hope right that we stay healthy and uh right. we can get after it and get better and um you know make it a good run here uh toward, you know in at the beginning and then right into the middle of the season and obviously it was a little bit different look uh to everything this year last year it was uh had games but really there weren't really any spectators still at that point last, last year so you know live streaming games became, became a great thing and actually i guess when you, when you consider where uh Todd Lisi's offices right at the end of the, one end of the court. Uh, you could have a better place to 
if you want to go, you know, look at from one end of the court to the other end of the court, the stream, and then of course there's like with it with it being the new gym, there's you know obviously you can get the side views. Right. So I mean you'll have that, but at the same time, if things don't go crazy, crazy. And with the OHSL, it's tough to deal with because of the fact there's so many different conferences. And Section right. 3, I think, has 13 counties that John Rappin right. has to deal with or something over, mm-hmm. overall. So every county has a different yep. policy. stuff. But, yeah, you know, it's looking like, you know, hopefully Friday night you'll, you'll, have, you'll have fans in the stands and uh, not just parents, but, you know, actually have some, you know, a few fans. And, I mean, that's got to mean a lot to the girls to be able to play in front of people again. Yeah, we're very excited. And, you know, I've gotten I've been sending emails out left and right and posting on social media about the game. And people are really excited to get back in the gym. Unfortunately, the boys have a game the same night against our rival uh, at Cortland they're playing. And I wish I could be there to go support the boys' team. And I know Coach Ryan and some of the boys probably wish they could come support the girls. Um, we're going to do, you know, we're trying to, you know, make a big deal out of it. And we're going to do a whiteout game. Everybody's going to wear white. I know there's a lot of the, you know, Bitty, we call them bitty basketball players, the youth players that are going to wear their, we have white believe shirts that they're going to wear. And, uh, you know, we're excited. We're excited to get fans back in the stands because two years ago when, uh, you know, we had a pretty good year, we, we did get a lot of fans in the stands. And, um, you know, it was rocking and rolling in there. And we're hoping we can get that back because I know the girls are very excited to see their, not just their moms and dads, but their friends up there and, you know, um, and get the people in there that are going to cheer them on. So it, it, it's going to be, it's going to be weird because it was, you could hear a pin drop in the gym, you know, back in March when we had our short season and it's, you know, being, you know, a loud team like we are and a loud coach like I am, it was, you know, very, very awkward sort of not to hear any other voices. And um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to see, seeing and hearing the fans. And I know the girls are too. And, uh, it's a right, it's a right number of teams. Some you know maybe it'd be nice to have a couple extras because of a possible injury, but just ten players, but uh, eight seniors and uh, just the two juniors and uh, some of these uh, seniors and and even some of the juniors they've they've been with the team the varsity team as long as you have because I mean yep. it's just kind of pick and choose as that some came up and it's as you lost some you know others you know players from years band they they filled in but it's kind of like there's a lot of girls some of these girls started right out when you did on varsity so uh talk a little bit about maybe the uh, your senior c- group first yeah so y- we got uh sarah Silvacool and, and gracie patriarch coming back for their their senior year which is unbelievable i got goosebumps just saying it um that they're back now for their fourth year uh with me since you know and i can't believe that i've you know i've been here that long like i said earlier uh sarah's become just one of the greatest leaders on the team she's such a great kid um she sticks up for her teammates she you know tries to get everybody involved um a very good vocal leader uh in to see the girl she's made since she was a freshman when i took over to where she is now as a senior is just um it's it's very very touching to be a part of um she's an amazing human being she is in you know i think she's very um underrated for the job that she does as our point guard um you know i know in football they talk about the the unsung heroes they did a little bit of a article on that in the syracuse standard and i think sarah sovacool is one of the most unsung heroes of our team over the last you know going into the four years so the three years prior to now you know she distributes the ball better than anybody she's the one that gets the ball up and down the court she's the one that has to bring it up against the press she's the one that you know sort of gets sometimes gets the, gets the tough assignment on on defense sometimes she's guarding a short little quick guard sometimes she's guarding a tall forward and she rises to the occasion um every time she needs to i'm definitely probably a little bit more hard on sarah than i am with uh a lot of other players and you know after you know coaching football this year with you know guys like uh gary Podseedlick and and tom cottrell you know it's sort of like you know she's the quarterback on the she's the quarterback on the basketball court and I, I love her to death and you know it's it's there's definitely been some awkward points where we definitely don't see eye to eye and we get into arguments and um but I I love her I love her to death and I'm so proud of her and I cannot wait to see what she does this this uh this year you know she's the only one out of the three coming back from last year that didn't make the all-league team and I was sort of burned by that because I thought she was probably the best point guard in the league but because people just look at stats and they look at scoring stats and they look at stuff like that um, she wasn't on there and uh, that that really burned me a little bit and I know she doesn't really show her emotion that that much but I know it had to have bothered her a little bit too 
Not that she wasn't the only one on her team, but there were players from other schools that she was better than that she probably should have been on the team. But because, you know, they played on teams where they were the only good player and they scored more points than her, they got on instead of she instead of her. Um, then you move on to uh, Gracie Patriarcho, who has just become a force in our league, you know, an all-league player, a uh, great kid, you know, a model student athlete. Uh, she is just some somebody that everybody should emulate as, as a student athlete. You know, she gets it done in the classroom. I never have to worry about her grades. I never have to worry about her getting in trouble in school. Uh, she, ta- she takes on the leadership role very well. She talks on defense. Whenever we need to model something in practice, it's always, you know, Gracie or like two or three other people that I'm getting Gracie in the drill. And I'm saying, if you're not doing it just like Gracie, you're not doing it right. Um, Gracie has become just a great young woman who just is, has so many goals. Uh, this year, um, she's become one of our all-time leading scorers in girls basketball. Uh, she's all, one of our all-time leaders in steals, um, and she's just you know that player that you can rely on to just go get the job done. She could be in the game the entire time, and she'll never ask for a sub. She'll get in. She'll just go 100 miles per hour the whole time. Then uh, you know we got Kayla and Kira Miller, the twins back, who have really risen up uh, to match the energy of the other ones. Um, this is Kayla and Kira's only second year on varsity, but I'm telling you, if you looked at their elbows and knees and saw it, all the scrapes and bruises, because they're the two that just dive all over the floor. They get it. They're undersized, but you know they're two of our better rebounders on the team. I'm, I'm very excited to see how they step up and play in this league. They had they had such a value to us um, on our our offense because they can get up and down the court they become very good three-point shooters um and d- defensively i would put them on any team's best player because they just lock people down and they move very well um so i'm very excited for them uh a girl that hasn't played in a couple years that came back this year is fiona hartnett uh you know as well as i have you know covering us the last couple years we have struggled with size fiona's about five nine five ten um so she's in now, and she's you know going to start at the center position for us. Um, she's a very you know solid, shifty girl, very athletic, still kind of raw talent wise because she hasn't played since JV. But she's a field hockey girl. She's a lacrosse girl in the spring, so she knows how to move and sort of run up and down the court. And we're very excited for her. Hannah Slade. This is um, and you know I think her father is one of your one of your sponsors, Casey. Uh, she is trying basketball for the first time since eighth grade. Is just excited about it, uh, working really hard. All of her friends play basketball in the winter. She wanted a winter sport to play and now she's just coming out and playing it uh brianna fortin's coming back for her second year she showed up for everything in the off season um it's going to be very exciting to see her play and see where she, uh, she sort of fits in just tries really hard asks a lot of questions um and does a great job and then uh harley st john who also hasn't played since uh modified as an eighth grader uh joins our team as a senior this year and uh you know she's just trying really hard um, and she's she's still learning, but she's she's getting there, and she shows up every day with a positive attitude, and she's friends with a lot of the girls that are here. And I think it's just you know what what gets me excited for girls like you know Hannah and Harley is they they haven't played basketball in so long, so they've got to learn so much at a quick pace. But they come to practice every day with a smile on their face, and they want to just be there around there with the girls and have fun. And so those are our eight seniors. Do you want to hear about the juniors or? <laughs> we, we will, but I'll say the other thing about having Hannah Slade join the team. She became kind of the uh, Kate Smith, Kate Smith of the football team. If you go back to the old Flyer days, uh, <laughs> she was saying it. She's saying it. I think saying it. Two of the three sectional games, and she, of course, saying you know for the sectional final at the dome, and then of course she's saying at the main Enwell game. But uh, yeah, it kind of, it kind of almost felt like you, you guys were like not the home team in any of the home roles in the home team except for the CVA game. <laughs> but uh, here you got you got your hometown singer singing the yeah. national anthem, and so many coaches raved about just her. Uh, I, I, I kept thinking, I got to Casey's got to be s- smiling that his daughter's got that m- much respect. She says that, and all the coaches afterwards are saying, what a great job she did yep. singing the anthem. So, I mean, uh, she's got some talent. Yeah, <laughs> Otherwise, we're ex- Yeah, we're excited for her to sing the anthem before our games, and I haven't talked to her about it yet, but she's going to be doing that. She'll be singing the nas- national anthem before our girls' basketball games, and I'm, I'm really pumped for that because she does have such a great voice. And <laughs> I, I love what, what gets me pumped up, and I think it got, you know, Coach Pod Seed look a little pumped up for basketball games was watching how, how into the – national anthem she was and how you know how emotional she was about it and just her body language she was there saying it just gets everybody else just so excited to be there and um and she's just such a great kid so i'm I'm really happy that she's on the team now and and yeah yeah no it's exciting and she looked good in the carrier dome on a big screen doing she that did anthem. yep <laughs> <laughs> but the, and like you said with these seniors gracie of course uh uh and sarah to them that uh 
aren't just basketball players. They they are very multi talented yeah. three sport athletes, and uh, you got a few of them. And of course, uh, the other you know a couple of them are, are the two juniors. And we'll start with the uh, you know an all all state caliber goalkeeper <laughs> in soccer, but also she's a very good basketball player and a player they say to kind of keep an eye on this year. And of course, and she's got softball, so yeah. I'm not quite sure where, which direction she'll go in the end. I have a good idea. I think I know which way she'll go. But uh, like you say, uh, Catherine Apgar, you're one junior, and the other one is uh, Amanda Root. Yeah, so Amanda Root is is just a great kid. So last year with the COVID season, we had to uh, we had to move a lot of our underclassmen up. We couldn't have a JV team just because you know um, we it wasn't because we didn't have the numbers. It's because we wanted these girls to get game experience, and they were going to get game experience with us up on varsity now that doesn't mean they were in every game that doesn't and they hardly were ever in a game the freshmen and sophomores from last year um and the only one that has stuck it out that i think didn't let it discourage her that she didn't play a lot last year and obviously she's the only one is amanda root amanda root is a great kid who is just like the other girls that are you know trying to pick up with uh you know our our big returners um she gets in there, and one one thing that I've said a lot this year to the girls is, you know, shoot your shot. And that just doesn't mean go in there and shoot the basketball. That means when you have an opportunity to make a play, be a playmaker. So I, Amanda's one girl that I always say, go, hey, make your shot. I go, Take your shot. You're going in the game. Play good defense. This is your opportunity to go out there and play with the other girls. This is your chance. Go out there and do it. And, you know, we've had we've had five scrimmages so far because that's something that I think is very important is getting that in-game sort of feel, even though it's not a real game. She's in there against other varsity teams, and she's getting decent playing time, and she's, you know, making the most of it. She's shooting the shot when she's open, and she's hit a ton of threes in these scrimmages. Um, so I'm just really proud of her, and she works really hard. So we're excited for that. And then, yeah, we got Catherine Apker, who's uh, – you know, coming back for her fourth year as a junior. Um, and Catherine's just a girl who, who just works extremely hard, not just at basketball, but everything she does, whether it's, you know, any of the sports that she plays or any of the other activities that she's in, um, whether it's, you know, in the classroom, you know, out in the out in the community. She is just a girl that gives 110% no matter what she's doing. Um, she is an incredible leader to our younger kids who are on JV this year who are, you know, newer freshmen and newer sophomores. She's always showing up to bitty basketball. She didn't miss a single thing in the off season either. She was there every single summer league game. She was there for every weekend in that we had girls, little girls basketball. And um, when we did our summer camp, she was there every day, not just for her session in the afternoon, but for the three hours in the morning with the K through uh, six girls. She's just a kid that um, I think a lot of girls that I see every day here in the elementary school at my job uh, want to be like her. They want to be a girl that, you know, walks around with a sort of confidence, um, you know, doesn't really, isn't overly arrogant or she just is very humble and she works very hard and you wouldn't know it. If, if she walked by you right now, you know, she is just so, she's just a happy kid that's just happy doing whatever it is. She's always smiling. Um, most of the time when I'm not, you know, getting on her in a basketball game, she's smiling, but she just works so hard and it's such a benefit as the head coach to have a girl like Catherine who shows up to everything for the younger girls because they look, it means the words that I say and the words that Catherine say, it means a lot more to the little kids coming from Catherine than it does the head coach. Cause they're like, Oh, here's another, she's, she's older, but she's not that much older. And we, you know, they want to be like her and she's a name that, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the K through six girls talk about, um, along with some other names on this, on the roster that you have. So yeah, I mean, looking at my roster, I'm, I'm very excited cause we have a lot of potential, you know, you know that just as well as I do. Um, we have goals this year and, uh, this, this group I think has the capability to get it done as long as, you know, we stay healthy and we stay focused. And like you said, a lot of summer ball, a lot of, you know, different things, you know, they, they did around the, around the season. And if people didn't pay a lot of attention, especially, you, you know, when you could see stuff online about what was going on, uh, you had a number of these who went up to the uh, state fair and uh, fared very well, going undefeated in a uh, one of the brackets up in uh, tur- the tournament the state fair held. Yeah, yeah. So we we played we played pretty well up there. We uh, we went in. I think we caught a couple people off guard with our speed and our ability to uh, to play with mass on because we did play so much during the summer and we have girls that played AAU so much um, and they did play a full season with their mass on. I think we sort of caught people off guard because you know the second day we were there we um, we didn't have to wear the mask because we were outside, but. Um, 
I think that our conditioning really sort of caught people out of, off guard because it was the middle of summer. It was probably 100 degrees outside. The sun's beating down on us. It rained for a little bit, so it was humid, and we're just running up and down the court. We were excited to be there, and we thought, you know, we were honored to be there, uh, obviously with some teams like South Jefferson, uh, CBA, uh, you know, West Jenny and Bishop Grimes. You know, we were just excited to be there and happy. And, you know, before the, I, you know, before the tournament, I said, I said, hey, you know what? Let's just go out there. Let's have fun. Let's work hard and let's just see what happens. And I think when we beat West Jenny in the first round, I think, you know, that sort of clicked like, hey, we're, we're capable of this. We deserve to be here. And, uh, you know, they took it, they took it in stride and, and, you know, I think my favorite part about that was after we won it, you know, it wasn't like this big celebration. It was just like, oh, you know, this is this is exciting. This is fun. And, you know, I think that that's sort of a benefit of ours is they've been doing this for so long. This is their fourth year. And when they won as, you know, eighth graders and freshmen, every sort of bit of success was a big deal. Now they sort of come in and they're like, okay, we know how to get the job done. We've been doing this not just for three basketball seasons we've been doing it for three basketball season plus all the off season stuff let's just go out there and get the job done and we know what we got to do and they're, they're a great group of kids who have a lot of experience and uh and yeah obviously the the off season really helped us out a lot how has it been for you like i said when you did start it the style of play changed a lot and you know you had some good seniors that came back but again you went to a lot of very young players that could play this more up tempo style, and like I said, I'm I'm very excited to see Sarah play this year because I remember watching her play that yeah. first year or so. And sometimes she's got ahead of herself, so you know she was trying <laughs> so hard and she could get ahead of herself. Yep. And so I'm I'm taking it that they have all you know now they've had this you know system under them for you know three years you know a good three years it'll be. Uh -huh. I'm I'm sure that growth has helped you as a coach has helped and it's made them more competitive and made them better that you know they they began with this system and so not and so they're benefiting from you know where i remember the seniors you had some back that were very you know some some opted not to play others did come back mm -hmm. you know came back when you took when you became the head coach and uh you know and went through you know changes in roles because of the style of play that you wanted to generate right um so it's got to, you know, it's got to be comforting to see, you know, like you say, how good Sarah's grown. And like I said, I can't wait to see her and Gracie. And, you know, I remember Kath, you know, Kat playing and, uh, you know, the Millers. It's going to be fun to see now, like you say, three, four years into your coaching reign and this offense that a lot of them have played all four years. It's going to be, it'll be fun to see what they do now, you know, as a, as a mature group. Yeah, no, I'm I'm very excited. I'm very excited because that's sort of this is sort of, you know, when you're in my position, when you do take over and you decide this is what the direction we're going and you move up those young kids, this is sort of the year where it's a lot and it, people at the state tur fair tournament laughed because they noticed that I wasn't so hyper and so moving up and down the court. And I told them afterwards, I said it was parents that have seen me, you know, now coaching for 4 years. And some of them knew me even before that. Before, when I was at Moravia, they they knew me then, and they watched me coach then. And they, you know, they're you know they're what's changed? Why? Are you? I go. It's because I've got girls that know the system. They know what to do. I don't need to tell them. Hey, we're pressing now. Get up. They already know. That's what we're doing. I don't have to tell Sarah. Hey, we're hitting the lane quick. We're trying to score quick. She already knows how to do it. I'm not telling Gracie and Catherine and the Millers and and Fiona and some of these other girls. We need to get down the court, and we're trying to score quick. They already know that's what we're doing. That's the goal, and their their minds and their bodies are just conditioned to do that. Um, and they're sort of the ones that are out there, and they bring so much energy and so much excitement that uh, it's it. Part of me doesn't want to get too excited because there's really nothing for you know. And I it, it's funny because even our modified teams are playing at that speed now, and when they're first starting to learn it, it's oh my god I scored a layup I scored a jump shot let's it's so exciting Let, let's celebrate and I and what I tell to the modified teams is oh we'll celebrate after we win stay calm just keep playing the system and uh and that's really what you know my my the vars I shouldn't say my our varsity girls do now you know they know I don't have to get excited and loud and and you know move 100 miles per hour because they're out there doing it they already know how to play they know that we're right in your face super aggressive we're going to be pressing the whole game um running up and down the court and uh so no I'm, I'm very excited because year four um, when you take over, I, I, I really don't think it's, you know, I, I, I take wins and losses very seriously, but I think it's a big piece of it also is have you installed a system that the girls are comfortable to play in or are they going to go out there and execute it 
to the, that the best they can. I, I hate saying 100 percent because are, are they going out there and just doing the things that you've taught them to do? And uh, I ha- I am 100 percent faithful that I know when we take the court on Friday, win or lose. We're going to give it everything we got. We're going to play the hardest defense that anybody's ever seen. We're going to be in their face. We're going to get after every loose ball, um, and, and we're going to give it our best shot. So, yeah, no, like you said, at four years, I'm excited to see what these fourth-year varsity players can do. Does that also maybe help calm you down a little bit too because you are going into your fourth year as a coach, and so – You've now been through the war a little bit, so you kind of yep. know what it's like too. That's got to. <laughs> yeah, it's not like oh, I'm new. I got to show what I can do. I got to right. make sure you know. I got to show we're different than what we were. Right. So there's a lot of pressure on you. Just that first year, just trying to say we're changing the culture. We're changing our look. This is what we're going to do. And that's a lot of pressure on a coach to come in here and I make that. Well, we could maybe start to implement my stuff, and but also keep some of whatever he's familiar with. And like I said, you. It, the, the old familiar went right out the window because you went to this new, you know, an up, which teams like South Jefferson, though, and West Hill are very comfortable playing up, right. up, up, you know, up temple games to begin with. So, I mean, you were just, you're, were, you wanted to elevate the level of play to what these good teams are the West Hills, the South Jeffersons, the, you know, the CBA stuff. And that's something you, you know, now, if, you know, have been able to do it. So, I think that's got to be just a little more relaxing for you, anyways, too. Yeah. Um, and, and like you said, I think it's it, it's and it's funny now in year four, I look back at when I first became a, a head coach. You know, you always think that you have every answer. It's like whenever you start anything brand new. It's like my first year at teaching. You know, you think you have all the answers. You think you really know what it's about. But then you get into the heat of the moment, and you're coaching against Sue Ludwig. Then you're coaching against John Sifanel, and you're coaching against all these people that have been to the top of the top. They've been to the bottom of the bottom and everywhere in between. And it takes, it takes, and I'm still learning now. I tell the girls all the time, I'm still learning too. You know, I'm, you know, I, I'm not that young, but I still consider myself a kind of young coach. <laughs> and, uh, but it's, it's definitely funny to like look back on how I, you know, sort of was so much different than, um, and much more aggressive and much more, you know, this is how we're doing things and look what we can do. And now it's like, all right, you know, it's not about, it's not about that, you know, teach the girls how to go out there and play. And, uh, and now that, you know, we know the landscape and, you know, I've become comfortable with the other coaches in the league and I know what everybody else is doing. It's, you know, it's much more methodical. You know what I mean? You know, what's going to happen and you don't have an answer for everything. Like I said, but I much more, and the, program is much more prepared for whatever game we go into now than we were four years ago when I took over. So I'll throw this out for, for the fun of it before we get yep. to talk about the teams more, but that's like you said, you're, again, you're one of those young energetic coaches and of course you, uh, <laughs> you, 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 you coached, you got your first, you know, taste of, you know, on the home of football sidelines this year with, uh, you know, a couple of alumni at a school that have, you know, played here in the past and, uh, 32 33 year old veteran coach yep. who started really young uh with the football team and this like i said finished his 33rd 34 second 33rd year as head coach but it's been with the program since like 85 yep. um and there, is it going to be one of those that maybe cj cooler will be that long-term longevity coach that could be here for a number of years would you like that or <laughs> they'll take it take it as it goes see i'm gonna I, i'm sort of in the middle i mean i love it here and i i do i have a lot of fun coaching here and now that we've built you know the youth program that we have you know it's funny i show up to work some days and you know at summer camp we gave out those white believe shirts that i talk about um i talked about earlier and it's funny you know i got kindergartners and upk girls walking by me and they're hey coach cool look what i'm wearing and they get all excited and you know i i hope i hope that i am a coach here for a while um you know and i mean i love it here i love teaching here i love coaching here it's it's been a great ride um but you know i don't like to plan too far ahead because you never know what's going to happen and uh you know i try to now that i'm a little bit older and a little bit more experienced you know i I try to take things day by day and you know you know i'm i'm really looking forward to practice tomorrow to get ready for skinny atlas on friday and if if you know someday they decide that i'm not the coach anymore then i won't be the coach anymore if i decide that you know i don't want to be the coach anymore i won't be the coach anymore and um hopefully that doesn't happen neither of those scenarios has happened and you know i am here for a while because i've seen what what that longevity does and what that camaraderie brings and you know it it was such a benefit to be around gary potsied look every day for the fall season um you know he's built a powerhouse and uh it's it's um it's awesome to hear his stories about, you know, back when he first started becoming a young coach and, you know, he compares himself a lot to a lot of the other young coaches that are at this school and sort of he, you know, he, get, he loves to give his wisdom and, um, 
Uh, no, that was it. Was awesome being with Gary, and and it's awesome to see what uh, what that. Because when, you know, little kids will come to our practices or our games and the system doesn't really change. You know, the youth programs run a lot of the same things that our varsity program does. And when you've been the head coach for so long and, you know, my dad coaches at Auburn and their head coach is one of the most long, longest tenured coaches is Gary Podsiedlik as Dave Moscow. So, um, you know, I've, I've been around it my whole life and I know what being a coach of a sport can turn into when you stick with it for a long time and you make that commitment and, uh, and yeah, no, I, yeah, I appreciate you asking that question, but yeah, I don't like to plan that too far ahead. And, um, I, I hope to God that someday I'm as, as successful as Gary, but that's going to take a lot of time and, and, uh, and I'd have to get very lucky. So <laughs> yeah. Can you take some of that momentum? I know the girls come to the games too and watch what the guys do. And, you know, sometimes the girls seem to feed off the guys seems and vice versa. Can you bring some of that excitement of being on the sideline with the guys this year and what they accomplished nine, 19 seniors on right. that team? So, you know, mm-hmm. senior leading team. Can, can you can that some of that energy transfer though from that season, and you bring, can you bring that to the basketball court at the same time? Yeah, and I think I think the fall season really sets up the other seasons um, for sports a lot more than people think because I think you know you develop sort of that confidence you know it's and I know that they're boys playing football and for me they're girls playing basketball but I think it develops a sort of a, a real big sort of a uh, in sense of, of confidence like you know hey we play for we play for Homer we take you know we take our athletics pretty seriously here you know if you're a student athlete here you know you're you know you're well respected and um, uh, just being you know from my own experience you know I've already started running practices not exactly like how Gary runs them but they're much more scripted out and um so just not just the momentum but sort of bringing you know the things that I've learned from that football program and sort of tweaked my basketball program not to mirror it but sort of you know the things that I thought were good I brought to basketball and um but yeah, I, I think that you can sort of bring that momentum from such a great football season and bring it in. And you know, you learn how to be a confident coach, but not an overly confident coach. Being around those guys because they've been there. I think, I think my favorite moment of being, and this is going to sound really funny, my favorite moment of the season coaching football with Gary this year was late in the main endwell game, and you know we were getting our butts kicked. And he looked at me and he smiled and he goes, "I've been here a million times before," and that was just. That really set something that really set, you know, I, I don't mean set, but it really taught me something like, you know, you have to remember, you know, this, these are high school kids. These are high school sport. You know, as much as we take winning seriously, um, it's about teaching these kids. It's about the fun ride and success, but not to take it, you know, don't kill yourself over it. Don't, don't, you know, don't let it get in your head and, um, you know, don't let it, you know each alive and that's you know that was just really great for gary to show me that and uh i'm I'm really grateful so yeah i'm hoping that we can bring some of the things the greatness from this football season into the basketball season and a lot of people don't realize how much of it they love you know the one thing i know that they always talk about being in the weight room and stuff like that but gary's in the weight room out of basketball season and if the girls soccer team girls want to be in there you you know your girls want to be in there for basketball Girls, the girls will get in those weight rooms and conditioning rooms and work up as hard as a guy would in a lot of cases. Yeah, um, <laughs> especially with our weight room right now because not all the equipment's in there. So we're trying to get everything moved in there, and we're trying to get the girls in there to lift weights. And um, I know a lot of them do it on their own. I know Catherine has a private trainer and works out a lot. So, uh, yeah, they, they don't understand how important that weight room is. So hopefully we can – Gary can keep that going with the boys, and I know a couple of the girls that he did had with an indoor track last year got involved with it, and um, yeah, it's been great. Well, uh, how, so, like you say, it's gonna be it's gonna be a weird year. There's only really the six games that matter the most. Those will be the division games, and those will decide who wins. You know, you who win a division and everything. But so is that the, what? What are the what goals do you have? Have you guys set for what you want to do this year as a team? Well, the one goal that I really think we need to take very seriously this year is, ju- and it starts with me at the top as the head coach, is to just go game by game. I think, you know, uh, I think in years previous, I've made the mistake of making some games a little bit more important than others, and that's, that is a huge mistake to make because um, you certainly don't want to look overlook any teams in the OHSL. It's one of the most competitive leagues in Section 3. Um, you know, the one thing, the, I think the goal that we have, 
when it comes to wins and losses is hey we we just we want to get into sectionals we want to get into the tournament um you know i put a whiteboard up every day very similar to what gary does for the football program i put up a whiteboard every day of you know the expectations and sort of where things need to be and every day it's you know it's at the top it says year 49 today it said day 13 this is our 13th day together and then it said 78 days till sectionals so you know i don't want you know we certainly talk about the teams that we're going to play like we talked about skinny atlas a little bit today but we're we really want to focus on ourselves we want to focus on ourselves we want to get better every day and i think that when you focus on we want to win this game we want to win that game you know i think that it, it sets a precedence that nope we just need to get better today we'll focus on the skinny house game on friday we certainly want to win our division um homer girls basketball I th- i've told you this a million times uh we're the only sport at homer that doesn't have a banner in the gym not a single year and that's been our goal since i took over you know we need to get a banner we need to you know set set get a tradition going and i think if we've ever had a good enough shot to get it it's this year and you know as long as we stay healthy and we stick to the game plan and um these girls absolutely love each other and i know that you know they support each other so i don't have to worry about that as long as we stay together as a team um we'll get that job done so that's really our goal is to you know make sectionals and then um once we get into league play is to win that division whether it be I mean, I know the schedules are tight as it is, and you know, you're limited to so many games you can play before sectionals start. Will there be, since there's four divisions, will there be any kind of like a, a mini league tournament where like maybe the four division winners would, would square off? Or not, or has it evolved that far yet? No, it hasn't evolved that far yet, and I'm, I'm sure you know, coming from the IAC like I did, they do that every year, and uh, – it's funny, I, I brought that up at a meeting with the other coaches. I said, now that we have four divisions, why can't we do like a mini, you know, top team from every division, get into a four-team playoff, and we play for the OHSL. And um, I, it, So this four-division this four division league is sort of brand new. Um, and, I, yeah, like, like, like you just said, it hasn't evolved quite that, quite that far yet. And, uh, you know, we're, we're excited to see how it sort of works out. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, as we said, the season opens up. It's, uh, you know, this is uh, just, you know, we're a couple of days away from the start of the season. And again, it'll be the Jessica M. Beale Memorial Tournament. Uh, home opening up their season. And the second game of the Twin Bill will be Lafayette and Moravia tipping off at 5 o'clock at the high school, followed by uh, Homer taking on Skinny Atlas. And then, of course, the consolation and uh, championship game coming up on the following night on Saturday. Again, 5 and 6 will really start. So, uh, CJ, you know, should be a fun, like I say, a, a really a vet, kind of a veteran team for, uh, but also you know a lot of lots of look forward to a competitive league again. And uh, well, you know we encourage people to come on out because people can come watch games and also come watch the uh, yep. Lady Trojans every chance you get. And uh, best of luck this season. All right, I really appreciate it, Tom. Thank you. And that'll do it for this edition of TV on the Net. Today's show brought to you by American Credit Union. For every day, for everything, located next to Little Caesars at 3944 Route 281 in Cortland. By Right Angle Creek Farm and Marathon, all natural, pasture-raised Angus beef from our farm to your table. By the Cortland Voice, the exclusive media partner of TV on the Net. For all your local news and sports in Cortland County, at no cost to you, check out CortlandVoice.com. By Yeaman Real Estate, at the entrance of Eamon Park off I-81, exit 11 in Cortland. By the Royal Auto Group on Route 281 in Cortland, the home of no hassle, no razzle-dazzle. Check them out at royalautogroup.com. By DJ Philly C. Make your wedding party or event extra special with the best DJ in the area. Contact DJ Philly C. at 607-745-4346. By Nikki C.'s Hometown Pizzeria and Meatball Shop on Route 281 next to Hobos in Homer. Find them online for fast, secure ordering or call 607-749-5300. They have a unique menu with dietary specific options. Nikki C's your grab and go specialists. By Graftex, located at Elm Street in Cortland. Founded in 1984, they provide custom screen printing and embroidery for teams and local businesses. Graftex continues its dedication to servicing customer needs for innovative graphic designs, custom and printed apparel, and quality service. They are easy to contact at 1-800-417-7791. By Seven Valley Agency at 18 Tompkins Street in Cortland for all your personalized insurance services. Give them a call at 607-753-1821 or check them out online at 7 
SeventhValleyAgency.com. Seventh Valley Agency, where your money matters, our advice counts. By Riley's Cafe in Marathon, open seven days a week for sit and dining in a friendly family atmosphere. Riley's also offers carryout and catering for some events. Check them out online at Riley'sCafe.com or call 607-849-6434. By Isaac Merger Studio, handling all your photographic needs in Central New York since 1982 at 74 Hamlin Street in Cortland. Give them a call at 607-756-0849 or check them out online at IsaacMerger.com or on their Facebook page. By Arnold's Flower Shop, your premier wedding florist at 19 West Main Street in Dryden. Uh, they have now holiday arrangements, centerpieces, and evergreen items available for this holiday season, of course, uh, Christmas not that far around the corner, folks. Give them a call, uh, 607-844-8601, or order online at arnoldsflowershop.com. By M&D Deli, located on Central Avenue in Cortland, open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. M&D has breakfast sandwiches, bakery items, and daily lunch specials. They are also available for catering. Check out their Facebook page for more information. Stop by or call 607-753-TO-GO. That's 753-8646. And look for their new food truck in the spring of 2022. And by Crop Growers, LLP. To your first choice in crop insurance, located in Homer. Contact Casey Slade at 607 591 2460 for more information. So for my guest Homer Girls basketball coach CJ Kudla, again the Trojans opening up this weekend with the Jessica Beale tournament on Friday and Saturday. I'm Tom Vartanian. Thanks for listening and we'll talk to you again soon.